Hey everybody, welcome back. Ruben with Texas All Water Fishing, and today I want to talk to you about winter fishing. It is that time of the year, you know, we get a lot of those northern winds, a lot of those cold front comes in, dropping the water temperature and pushing a lot of water out. Now there's a few different type of areas, a few different type of structures that I really like to target fish during this time of the year, simply because simply because the water is that cold the water temp is cold and that's kind of where i've had most of my luck and most of my success now there's all different kind of apps out there you can use there's all different kind of forecasts that can predict the bite and doesn't show you when the bite is and incoming and outgoing tide and i'm not really going to focus on that so much as i am going to focus on utilizing google maps utilizing google earth and kind of looking at spots that you can find some fish and looking at locations and even talk to you talking to you about a few techniques that have worked for me over the years deeper water is one of the areas i like to target whether it's a gut made by dredging or it's just a hole you want to look at some deeper water and you want to explore just a little bit and kind of see what you can see what you can find out there if you don't have a fish finder then you know you can use google maps you can use google earth and you could drop pin drops on your phone especially if you're weight fishing and then you can walk out to some of those spots and and cast in those deeper holes and deeper channels one of the other areas I, I like to target is also oyster reefs and muddy bottoms. A lot of the deeper cuts and deeper channels are going to have muddy bottoms so the fish are down there getting warm because what that mud does is it gathers the sunlight and the energy and it holds the warmth up very good and warmer water down there as well as, well as bait fish just like oysters do. Just like anything darker, um, bulkheads, whether they're metal or concrete, they're going to absorb the sunlight and heat up that area a lot, a lot better. And also, those bulkheads provide structure as well. So, you know, we all know that fish love structure, bait love structure, and that's where you're going to find a lot of predator fish you can be looking for and targeting. All right, so I'm using Google Earth right here, and I, I don't think I've ever really ever fished this area. I just kind of want to show you one thing very quickly is if you look around the subdivision here, and this is m true for most subdivisions you're going to find in really any water or around any water, is that you can see right here you have the water depth and you have a water change. It's a little bl cleaner, a little darker blue uh, or green blue, greenish blue, but you can see right here we well, can see it's more shallow and then you have the water drop and that's really for boats to get in and out and and move around but this is the kind of areas that i like to target during this time of the year and and also when you're looking at some of these spots where it's a little darker or where the water is a little deeper you can also see that you can have grass grass flats or right here kind of looks like oyster so Again, wherever it, the water is deeper is where you're going to find a lot of fish. Like I was just showing you a second ago, fishing around a lot of these neighborhoods are, is really a safe bet to do. Um, and even if the water is like really, really extremely low, a lot of times the, those guts, they're going to be anywhere from 6 to 8 feet deep. And with the water temperature dropping, you might get lucky and you might find some 4 to 5 foot uh, depth there. And um, this past week, you know, four feet was really all we needed the water temperature about 53 degrees and just that little four to five foot drop in depth seemed like it was holding most of the fish for us the other day when we went out one of the things that i'll encourage you is to spend a little time on your pc spend a little time on your phone so you can look for areas to target such as what i'm showing you right here just coming out this neighborhood this is a great area i think i'll probably post up a little right here and fish this whole side you can see right here how it's the water is much deeper here than it is here so this is another area that that i would fish you know i would come and either drop my anchor or power pole or if you have access right here to walk out and wait fish and you know just be careful when you're out in the water but any of these any a lot of these darker spots that you see and again i've never i don't think i ever fished this area before but a lot of these darker spots you see you know there's sometimes it's oyster sometimes it's grassy bottom but either way, it's going to be in your benefit to to fish it and to look at that. I mean, look right here by Snake Snake Island Grove Cove. You can see how this just comes out. I mean, this to me is a prime, prime place to fish and to target fish. 
especially if you have an outgoing tide. Now, all this water is going to be pushing and being sucked out, so it's camping up right here would be a, a great location. And I'm not saying go fish Snake Island Cove. I don't know anything about this area, but it's uh, just looking. I mean, even right here, it's just a great spot to see. And I'm not trying to burn anybody's spot. I'm really just using Google Maps. You can just see right here, too, how it's just really, really deep right in this area. And, you know, you have the grass line. You have oysters, I'm sure, down there. You got a muddy bottom, I'm sure, as well. And this is just prime, prime, prime places in space where you can really find a hone in and, and catch some of those winter fish because, let's be honest, sometimes it can be quite a struggle to try to get a fish on. All right, so let's talk about technique. You know, what kind of techniques am I using? How am I fishing? Some of these deeper holes and, and deeper guts if you will some of these deeper passes um and that's really where i like to target my winter fish i like to look for them and my first my go-to spots is deeper water that's where i go now if i see some oyster reef or some some grassy bottom or a bouquet on my way well then i'll hit that as well but most of the time i am looking for those deeper holes and i'm going to show you right here now bear with me this graphic i spent a lot of time on <laughs> it's awful but you can understand what I'm trying to tell you right here on the PC. All right, so on this horrible, terrible graphic you see right here, you can see we have a drop-off that's going to go down. And we're going to say this drop-off is about 5 feet, 7 feet deep. All right, so you have the drop-off. You have water. That's a skyline. Yes, I know. I'm, I'm one step away from cutting my ear off. But you have a muddy bottom down here. You have the incline where it comes up to some oysters and even some grass. So what I will simply do is I would get on this side. I like to primarily be in the shallow side if all if I can help it. But I'll get on the shallow side and I will cast into the muddy bottom, into the deep hole, into the drop off. Now, and I will bounce my lure on the bottom trying to entice the fish. Now, mind you, a lot of times our winter bite is a slower bite. So you got to slow down. You got to take more pauses. You really got to slow down your bite. And we'll talk about lures here in a second. But And then I will come up to the incline. Now, this is one of my favorite places right here at the incline where it goes up. I, get a, I have a lot of success coming up. And not just on the run, money bottom, like I'm saying, but just on the incline. Then you run into the oyster. You can feel that little oyster. So try to keep your lure out of the oyster because you don't want to get hung up. But you want to touch. You want to flirt with danger. You want to flirt with, in this oyster reef and really, really flirt with getting yourself hung up. I know it's a price. It's a price to pay, but it's a small price. It can really, really mean the difference of getting a, a good bite or not. And then again, I'm trying to I'm trying to stick to the bottom. So almost like I'm fishing for a flounder. And I would let it, sometimes I'll let it fall. I'll let it sit there and I'll just wiggle it a little bit. Especially if I'm like just right on the outside, off the side of the oyster or just right in the mud. You know, and then I'll just continue to bounce. And then you can feel that little bit of grass. And I'm kind of trying to keep it out of it, but just still, still keep it there. But you have different water columns. So you have different water columns. And the fish, it's... They can be anywhere in there, really. They can be anywhere in that drop. They can be anywhere down there. I mean, if you're bouncing on the bottom, if you're bouncing on the bottom and the fish are a little higher, then you will miss your bite. You will miss where the fish are going to be at. So I will I will come back and I'll change it up. Next cast, if I didn't get anything. Now I will come back and I'll change it up. If I didn't get anything in the first initial cast, I might drop all the way back down and I might pop it higher. Don't necessarily let it get all to the bottom, all the way to the bottom and just let it fall. Bring it up and let it fall. Bring it up and let it fall. And just fish that lower to mid water column. And you might get very, very lucky and, and find the fish that way. Another technique that works a lot is really dragging your lure. So you cast back down here, and you just slowly drag your lure, and then pause. Slowly drag your lure, pause. Slowly drag your lure, pause. And just do this all the way up. And you can feel the oyster reef, so kind of slowly swim it over the top of that. Let it fall down so you don't feel the oyster reef anymore. And then you start getting into the grass, you feel the grass, and just kind of do the same thing. Just kind of... Kind of slowly swim your lure back to you. 
you know like I said you can do this on all the different water columns you can let it fall to the bottom and then swim it slow retrieve back up to you just to try to find where that fish is just to try to find where the bite is now one of the things that are also a, a very important as well is the type of lures you're using what are you using a lot of times a lot of people like to use these corky style lures now these are h2 express but a lot of time I like to use these corky style lures because they, they're slow falling they're a very slow falling lure and that real slow subtle fall is what the fish are going to be looking for a lot of times the trout are really going to want that slow falling lure so that's a great time to change up your jig head go fish with a lighter jig head fish with a smaller jig head fish with a less weighted jig head now there's a bad side to that is because one you can't cast as far with the lighter jig head as you can with the heavier jig head or at least i can't maybe you got a heck of an arm you can zip it anywhere but at least i can't and especially if the wind is blowing uh, that wind will catch your your line a lot and it's not gonna let you put it where you necessarily want it but you know a lighter jig head and a slower uh, a slower fall is always always great to try to use um i know pop what also is popular is a lot of these bugs lures you know that's the slower falling lighter bugs lure also helps one of the things that i would recommend is scent put scent on your lure scent your or buy scented lures scent you it's winter fishing it's a slow bite there the fish are hard to find a lot of times they're there just not eating they don't like what you're 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 giving them they're not what they don't they don't feel like eating they don't want to eat so you have to use anything and everything in your disposal to make it work for you scent is one of them whether you use procure or you use a gope i mean let's face it gope is a great great lure to use it's scented uh, the, the problem is they get torn up easy, but you know, I'm, I'm a big fan of gope. I'm a big fan of perkly gope. I catch a lot of fish on them. Um, but besides scent is sound, right? Texas rattly jig heads do have these rattle jig heads. Sorry, the mic's down there, but you can hear that jig head. So using that or even using a chatter weight on your, on your rig, on, on your leader is also great to use. Um, Tail knocking lures. I like using tail knocking lures. They have a little rattler in the tail here, and I will pair them up with a Texas rattling jig head because I'm gonna double it up, right? I'm gonna get a lot of sound out of out of this lure right here. But you know, going with the smaller profile lure again because if you want to get that fall, if they're not biting on a certain style of lure or a certain size of lure, then you know, there's I always take a different sizes of lures with me just so I can change it up. Now these are voodoo shrimp and I really like the voodoo shrimp, but you know, just to change it up, just to offer the fish a different presentation because again, they a lot of times they want that slow fall. One of the other lures, uh, one of the other uh, rigs I've been trying lately is these bucktails. These bucktails by, by Salty Heads. And uh, you know, they've been doing the trick. They've been really working good. Now I'll pair them up and I'll put a lure on them lately i've been using a lot of i've been using some 3jd lures right here i've been pairing up with 3jd because you know they're the guys are buddies so show them both love right but also been using some of these wedge tail now this is a really nice wedge tail i like this one this is a crab this is uh ingrid baits wedge tail i like i like tails i like stuff with good moving tails good movement um you know even changing like the style style or the size of lure really will will help you out a lot on on just triggering that bite just getting that bite if you know i throw sometimes i'll throw heavier jig head sometimes i'll throw a smaller lighter jig head so we can get that fall that's why i carry like three or four rods of me especially when i'm on my kayak because if they're not hitting them with this style then i hit throw with that style and then again you gotta you gotta really look at water clarity right now water is pretty clear the water is pretty clear during winter time uh the ground is pretty firm Looking for those mud patches really helps a lot. Looking for those oysters, reefs helps a lot because, like I said, it has a lot of that warmth around it. Uh, the water is warm around it. It gives structure for bait fish. And um, it can really trigger a bite by targeting those spots. But, you know, I, I hope this helps you. 
Yeah, I don't want to spend too too much time and get too technical in uh, in showing you how I fish because, like I said, I, I did do a winter segment video last year. I'll leave the link below in the description section so you can go back and look at some of that. You know, only thing I can recommend is that you just get out there, get time on the water. When we do have some of these low line water levels with the north winds getting pulled pushed out, it's really really a great time to be out there and and pin drop some spots where you see okay well this you know here's the deepest part of the cut here's the deepest part of the channel oh here's some oysters I didn't realize I was there here's some more structure that I didn't see there there I mean it's really a good time to get out and not only plan for your next trip but plan for your spring and summer trips as well because the water levels aren't always going to stay this low so it's a great time to get out there and you know and put some knowledge in the bank that way you can come back during the spring and the summer and and target those fish but hey i hope this helps you i hope this encourages you to get out there and fish if, even if we do have some of those lower water levels it help i hope this encourages you to get out there and explore a little bit bit get some time on the water get out there enjoy yourself and hopefully next time you catch me Hooking up. Thanks.